All right. So um, welcome to Office Hours. Uh, had a request from uh, Michelle and some others um, to kick off these this time together, uh, talking specifically about uh, reporting. Um, knowing our July reports monthly are, are coming due um, and some questions around the transfer from last program year to this program year um, and also get your feedback on ways we can um, uh, update the language of that reporting to be to be more clear. Um, Let's see, I don't want to launch too far in without um, acknowledging um, Michelle. I know the question started from um, you wanting to kind of go through some of those specifics. Um, and oh, we have both Michelle's on today, Michelle Jill. Um, though uh, I know others have reached out as well with questions. So I thought, um, uh, Michelle Jelm, if you are comfortable, maybe just framing up where, uh, where questions are coming from you um, and starting our conversation there. If that's all right. Yeah, sure. I'm not really living in report reporting land right this second, but I think that the question um, is kind of around how to do the July report in the sense that are we reporting on um, the kiddos who we had in process slash enrolled in the summer or in process slash enrolled in the fall, because um, those kind of are overlapping for July as as well as August, I suppose. Yep. August too, and then also how that would impact um, not only just like the general reporting with the numbers, but the vacancy report as well, because the vacancy slot counts for those two, I don't know if I call them two different program years or two different grant cycles maybe is the right terminology, mm -hmm. uh, the vacancy counts for those two different grant cycles are different. So my vacancy counts would not make a lot of sense if I were to report on both years, like I wouldn't know how to do that um so yeah that's kind of where the, the questions arose yeah that thank you thank you that summer and fall um over i will say i think overlapping enrollment work for two grant periods which also may have at least some overlap either in community or in um service uh so what i've gotten clarity on. Um, I'm going to start with the more, I think, distinct one around vacancies. Um, so here, let me, maybe I will just share quickly so everyone's reminded um, where exactly we are when we're talking, reporting here. All right. Can everyone see the dashboard now? Okay. See a thumbs up. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so uh, for example, if we click in um, to our vacancy report, you know, we have those um, uh, providers for whom you're doing um, enrollment and so therefore need to know around vacancy pieces. Um, one key crucial shout out to, I think Luis brought it to my attention. We didn't have all the months <laughs> available. Um, so those have now been added through the end of this year. Um, and, and um, for uh, remaining vacancies of the last day of the reporting month, um, while we are over the summer, um, would ask, I guess, what is the feasibility? I'll ask you all, like, in how you're looking at vacancies. Um, would it be possible for July? Um, Let's start with July. I think we'll have a bit of a conversation about August overlaps, but for July, um, reporting on only summer vacancies. So those where maybe, like I think the thought being um, where there are services like in place or happening um, where vacancies are. Um, got a question from the preschool promise team like would that be possible um, or how are you all tracking vacancies and what um, what as like overarching guidance would um, would be doable for having summer grant and fall grant opportunities so for us we are tracking the vacancies and just general enrollment and things 
totally separately. So it would not be hard to report on summer learning vacancies because those have, you know, their own kids, they have their own slot numbers that are totally separate from the fall situation. So that would not be an issue in, in our hub, but I don't, I'm not sure how other yeah. are doing stuff. I know for us, that's how it is as well. And, uh, you know, we just got the, like, for sure, go ahead to start doing placements. So we hadn't started any of that. So we would show fall vacancies completely open for all of July. So all that we have placed in July would be for summer. That makes sense. But shouldn't we, as we go, um, shouldn't this report also show the people that are returning and the new matches for the month of July that will be for the 21-22 uh, school year? So it seems to me that summer should probably a standalone uh, report and then the returning uh, matches, the new students should be its own report. So summer report, oh, because um, you're tracking the vacancies for the fall that you're seeing, but also accounting for anybody who's returning already. So of course, that, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. I see. And I think, yeah, I think that was part of the, um, the question around the vacancies is like, when we think about what we'd be, you know, using this information for to like, see trends or take action on, you know, for over the summer, I think the vacancies is, is um, or I think one of the key areas is, do we have spaces where there's currently services operating that are vacant, right? Does that tell us something, even as you plan for fall and are obviously working on filling those vacancies? So that's, I think, the, the area I was wondering what's, yeah, what's possible there, Begonia. So I hear you saying, standalone summer would tell you more than like we're already accounting for fall vacancies as well with those that continue is that is that kind of the distinction you're making so just to make it clean so the children that continue or are new to the summer program should be a standalone but at the same time our ongoing work is continue uh, identifying those that continue to a second year returning and, uh, and verifying the new ones. So that's an ongoing work that is happening at the same time as summer. So then that means that you will have maybe 300 children that will be uh, blended and braided. So there will be some of them summer, some of them returning, some of them new if you don't distinguish them, right? Yeah, and that's exactly where I was hoping to go next is on how do how do we capture the enrollment activity that's that's taking place. So with vacancies, it sounds like I heard from a couple like we have our summer vacancies list, we have our fall vacancies list, no problem to report either. I want to make sure that that's possible. And then, yes, enrollment is, I think, um, the guidance, you know, we've all been operating on is any new enrollments happening for summer, you know, and fall are going through the fall process used to um, continue on for um, all the families that are interested in continuing on into the fall. And so, oh, great. Thank you, Begonia, for saying you're tracking summer separately as well. Um, and so maybe if we move towards enrollment, yeah, to talking about enrollment, um, being able to capture that work as what, you know, how many children are you um, enrolling for either summer or fall? So combining those um, given, like you said, the like overlapping blending of those situations. Um, that's That was, I think also the, the question, would that make most sense for our enrollment reporting too? Do others feel that for July overall numbers of, of who's been enrolled uh, to complete that um, monthly in PSP enrollment report that that would be preferred would be um, totaling the children whether they're first they're starting in summer or starting in fall, but all the activity that took place in July, or is there have other thoughts on that piece. Oh yeah, I see. 
So we had summer summer start dates are very early um, and willing to to start programming or in early August coming through in the chat. I see that. Wow. Do you mind repeating your question, Anne? I'm not sure I understood. It. Sure. Let me um let me help myself with a visual. <laughs> So if I move into our monthly enrollment report, um, if we're looking at being able to report on kind of our total total enrollments here um, for July, uh, basically asking regardless of if the child's starting for summer programming or starting for fall pro or like enrolling for fall programming, um, the I guess the like proposal is like, can we report on all children who were, you know, through um, through enrollment in July? <clears throat> I think for most, that's to Mina's point, mostly going to be our summer enrollments, um, given that we kind of tentatively placed. But excuse me, um, knowing we had families, you know, going through eligibility process, is it? If guidance were to say combine summer enrollment and fall enrollments and report the overall number in this field or in these fields, would that work with your processes or are there other considerations you'd want to take into account? That would work for our that would work. Oregon. Awesome. Thanks, Shelly. That would work for ours too and Lane. Okay. Any concerns um, from anybody about ability to do that? And my my only other question here, knowing now that we don't have conversion, um, right? We have prioritized previously or like currently enrolled and attending with the provider, but not necessarily using a separate application. Um, are you all comfortable with me <laughs> removing this part of the reporting question? I see a thumbs up there. Um, always like to give you a heads up before things disappear. Oh, did someone come off mute just then? Let me see. Oh, thank, I just, I can see the chat now again that I'm not sharing my screen. So thanks, Mina. We have children continuing into summer and tentatively started to continue. So being able to report them, given that they're moving through, <laughs> moving through those process. So when we're talking about um, looking in the chat, seeing the calling those returning students, and then do we make any distinction or roll them up in one? Mina, I wanna make sure I'm understanding your question. Are you asking, do you need to count returning students somewhere? Or do are you asking, are we making a distinction between summer and fall? No, so I didn't know that if we are calling the ongoing student as a returning student, because they never left. Returning right. student was they took summer and returning for the next school year. So the first group that who attended entire 2021 or you know partial 2021, and then just stayed with the same provider for the summer before they graduate. They're not returning students. So then, do you want us to separate that from? I see. Uh, yeah. So there's like so many right? Different circumstances. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think the way that our, I hear you. So those, those students would have been basically in a previous month would have been reported like at their time of entry into the system. And then like they, they show up as taking a vacancy, right? That's not a vacancy then because they're there, but they wouldn't necessarily get counted as a new enrollment ever again, right? Because they're they're just they're continuing onward. Um, and so the way this report has been set up is like how many new enrollments happened during this month um, and counting for them. 
So I don't think we would um, we would see them report the returning students or the ones that continued from last year into the summer show up in this new enrollment report. Um, we would not be needing to add those um, for enrollment report there. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, no, great distinction there. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, I see a hand. Is that Alessandro? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you partially uh, answered to the question I had. Yeah, because uh, some of the returning will be counting also as a, as a student for the next year. Mm -hmm. Some not because we will go to kindergarten. So uh, how to consider this, this returning in the count because they are coming from the, the previous year. So are you saying that we should count for the, the July report just the new students? Correct. Yeah, for the enrollment report, just those that you've you've enrolled in the month of July. Okay. Overall number there. Yeah. Oh, and I see Athena. Um. So, if we're doing an overall enrollment for portion for every student that's enrolled for summer and fall together in July, um. And then if we do vacancies for just summer programming. That's going to look, make our numbers look a little off because we only have, you know, three vacancies, but we've only enrolled 100 students. So it's not lining up. So um, will that be like seen amongst, you know, that the numbers aren't aren't matching? Yeah, great point. I think um, I think that's why we wanted to have this conversation and talk is what what do we need to um have as like a, a disclaimer or like an explanation towards um, towards what we're seeing in reporting numbers um, to be able to yeah to say for this month you know we were we were looking at um, enrollments holistically and um, vacancies specific to where um, where there were services actively going on um, so I think that would be part of like what what lives on in this um, data report is, you know, for uh, for the summer vacancies, for vacancies reported in July, um, we are looking at uh, summer specifically, um, so that we can try to have a an accurate um, or or um, at least a described a uh, uh, picture of the vacancies where services were ongoing. Oh, I see Michelle's off mute here. I just, I mean, I'm kind of confused on the summer stuff, but um, because didn't providers have to basically apply for those summer slots? Do, don't you guys already have the numbers for the vacancies for summer? Because my understanding, they already had to be a PSP kid for them to be able to go into the summer program. So aren't those numbers already calculated? So providers applied and they, they could apply for up to however many preschool promise slots they had in 2020, 2021, right. like at the end of last year, um, of last program year. Um, what we are trying to like paint the picture of is like some providers applied for all of their spaces, even if they weren't fully enrolled at the time that they applied. And so there were some summer vacancies that um, needed filling. Um, and so what we're trying to make sure we have the picture of is, you know, where, where was there a summer vacancy, um, that, that was, um, then I think the guidance, I'm not going to remember the exact wording of it, but the guidance was essentially, you know, this could be an early beginning to like our, our 21, 22 program year. So that's, ours are, are going to look kind of a little funky just because we have majority of school district ones which don't function in the summer um sure. so you, you know, know what I mean and then and yeah. so it's going to kind of look like oh well they're all vacant you know what I mean so our numbers are probably going to be a little bit bigger yeah yeah I agree with you Michelle and, and I'm also concerned about um the reports helping us to document for us so I'm, I'm concerned that you know we have our documentation and we have you know um in place counting and understanding and then this is another language on top of that 
that's I'm concerned it's going to be very confusing for us. And then um, my second thing is you said getting rid of the conversion stuff. I also have kind of a concern on that because a lot of the ones that did function in the summer um, are um, every single one of those children that were were in the toddler program were converting that I've already completed all their eligibility for the fall. So I wouldn't be reporting that for July. I would have to report it for August, even though I got it done in July. So I, I think you would be reporting them. There, okay. When we did conversions last year, there was a separate application that okay. families had to fill out if they were conversion families that no longer exists. So I, I would be asking that you like for those um, infants or those toddlers that are aging into it, you'd be counting them in your overall new enrollments. Okay. Rather okay. than like counting them as separate. As separate. Okay. Yeah. So, Thank Anne, you. Um, do you have any idea if next year we're going to have a summer program or if this was just like a, this year was an exception, there was money, but most likely it won't happen again. That is asking a lot of tea leaves to be read. Um, I, <laughs> I think um, you know this this summer funding came for, as a response with COVID nineteen um, through the legislature. So I don't know what our summer plans are moving forward for Preschool Promise. Um, I'm just saying that thing because if this is just one year, let's do the standalone and let's not let's not complicate things. But if this is like an ongoing program summer, then obviously let's think about how to approach it next year mm -hmm. the best way. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Um, oh. And with like piggybacking a little bit on that, um, how? Will the ELD be communicating to the providers that summer funding may not be available for next year so that they're not relying on that or prepping parents for that possibility if it's not for sure available? That I can understand how having information about that early and often um, would really, really help um, the providers there. So. I'm, I'm taking that note. Thank you for that um, suggestion, Athena. And I know Crystal here is also representing our program team to make sure we think about um, the future lasting pieces as well. Yeah. Thank you. So Anne, is that a go? Like the vacancies are going to be summer and the monthly reporting is going to be summer and fall. Is that what we're doing? That the one idea that I just wanted to um, run by you all um, is uh, based on Jillian, you saying with your the tracking and hearing that um, many of you are tracking summer and fall vacancies separately. Um, another thought that occurs to me is um, would it be helpful to add a reporting period of like July summer um, and ask you all to report summer vacancies and then report um, your fall vacancies for July, the ones you're working on in yeah. July? Um, would that be a more holistic picture for you all? I see a thumbs up on that. And I think with all of this, we know like this trying to then track things that have passed while we were all working to work on new programs and new systems is going to have opportunities, I'll say, to uh, to improve our reporting. So um, just know we're we're fully aware that the the distinctions or the the ways we might report this might not match exactly how it's happening. Um, but, but that, yeah, if that's another, I saw two thumbs up, I think, for being able to report your summer vacancies in one and then your, your fall or continuing um, vacancies in another. So I'm gonna, I'll put out to the, the everybody um, what we talk about and decide about today to be able to say that could, that could work. I can um, create a space to report that too.
And do you think that maybe you can have an an option for the vacancies for like certain ones that like zero would be like they they weren't in session during the summer or you know something a little bit easier or else I mean we could do the full okay 18 were <laughs> you know vacancies because they didn't function but then you got to know okay well I mean 18 is an easy one because that's a full classroom but like say you know somebody else that doesn't have the full 18 I mean will you know that they weren't in session just by putting a number or should we put like zero or NA maybe as an option? Or can you remove the providers that was not operating in summer? I was just thinking the same thing, Mina. I think what I can do is see if I can only show, if I can get our data folks to only show those who had summer grants in that summer list. Yes. Um, if for some reason I can't, then yeah, I'll put in like, put NA in the summer vacancies if we can't get them removed. Thanks for that. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so one last recap. Enrollments all together, regardless of summer funding or fall funding, if you completed an enrollment in July, count them in those totals. Vacancies, I'll add a summer vacancy report reporting option. Um, and then our July 20, and, and like make clear which one is for fall vacancy option. So you'll have a summer vacancy report and a fall vacancy report through the reporting month select option. Okay. Any other spaces on reporting that we wanna make sure anyone who wasn't able to join today can hear and record? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording here.